there was a huge um, uh, deadly attack in Ukraine, specifically in the Donetsk, uh, so uh, the city of Donetsk, and this was a ballistic missile. The Ukrainians allegedly, this is what the Russians are claiming, they, they claim that the Ukrainians fired a ballistic missile, and it, while it was still intercepted, so they were able to intercept the, the missile, uh, pieces from it fell and killed uh, over 20 people. Again, th this is the headline from Al Jazeera. They say that 23 dead in missile attack on Donetsk. So fragments from a Ukrainian missile that was shot down fell in the rebel-held city center, killing 20 civilians, according to Russia. Uh, the Ukrainian military has denied launching a missile attack on the separatist-controlled city of Donetsk after the Russian Defense Ministry said that 23 civilians had been killed in a Ukrainian missile attack. Russia said that the Toshka U missile, so that's the, the, the model of it, had also wounded 28 people. So, so that's 23 civilians killed and 28 people wounded in addition. They described it as a war crime as well. I'm, I don't know what the hell the browser is doing, excuse me. But in, in any case, so they, it killed uh, 23 people, 28 wounded, and uh, they called it a war crime. The figures, I mean, this is, uh, it's horrible. I saw the photos and I cannot show you them. They're, they're, it's really horrible. The, the largest attack, uh, you know, since the beginning uh, of the, the latest hostilities. So if you go and look at the CNN Quote, at the moment, we can talk about the largest number of civilian casualties as a result of a single strike. The leader of the Donetsk People's Republic, Denis Pushilin, told Russian television. Around 20 people died, but the number is being updated, he told Russia 24, calling it a war crime. So again, you see it was 20 at the time we made that quote, and it's climbed since then. Here's a map just to illustrate again to you what we're talking about. You guys remember that Russia recognized these two breakaway republics, so Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic. Again, so both of them together make up the Donbass region, right? But we're talking about the city of Donetsk. They say that reports of this attack came as Ukrainian and Russian negotiators met for a fourth round of talks since Russia invaded its neighboring country on February 24th. The talks ended after several hours without a breakthrough. I did, first of all, I didn't hear about this attack from mainstream media, number one. Uh, the, the bit that I just showed, showed you from CNN, I couldn't find it at first. I typed CNN, missile, Donetsk, nothing. I, I had to go digging and searching specifically on CNN to find it because it was buried. Uh, there's been no uh, headline in Western media. I, I, I looked in the news section. I couldn't find any headlines, like an actual headline uh, about this. Uh, and... No condemnation, as far as I know, no one, uh, no one at all has condemned this from the West. I can assure you if it happened in, uh, you know, if it was the other way around, the Russians had launched this, they would immediately condemn it, right? Here's a fragment of the bomb. Usually, you know, parts, weapons, they have serial numbers, you can see who the manufacturer is and so on. Uh, again, I don't know if the Russians are using this because some people, I'll tell you what the other side has been saying. The, 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 um, uh, people have been suggesting that the Russians did this and it's a false flag attack, right? So the Russians fired this at, uh, Donetsk so they can frame the Ukrainians as having done that. Again, I, I have no evidence to suggest that. I have no clue, uh, where this comes from, but that's what people are saying. I'm just telling you what people are saying. I'm just reporting to you. Uh, you know, again, I have no clue where that comes from. I don't know why Russia would would uh, would do that. Um, here's some more pictures underneath. Smoke and fire. No, do you notice where this is taking place? Do you see that this is in the middle of the city? Right. It's most certainly a residential area. And uh, again, I'm I'm just gonna I'm not gonna uh, show you anything graphic, but the the this is certainly a war crime if it turns whoever did it. I mean, it doesn't matter who did it. It's certainly a war crime because they I don't see uh, uh, any reports from anyone about any military target being here. It's not like someone fired the missile and said, yeah, but they were sh sheltering such and such munitions here or whatever excuse. No, this is nothing. Absolutely, it looks completely indiscriminate to me. Now at the same time. You know, ballistic missiles can also, uh, not just ballistic missiles, uh, surface-to-air missiles, ammunition in general, you have duds, you have things that are errant, 
uh, this could very well also be an errant uh, missile. You know, it could have also been a complete accident. I don't know. You know, when in Syria last year, uh, the Syrians tried firing at an Israeli jet that was bombing Syria, and the, the missile ended up chasing this Israeli jet for like 200 kilometers, and it almost, almost hit the... Um, uh, Dimona nuclear facility. It fell just a few kilometers from that. So you, this this does happen. Uh, I'm just speculating in this case, but either way, what I what I know for sure is that this is extremely tragic. Not just this attack, but seeing two million refugees. Man, this is so messed up. Reminds me of Syria, you know. Um, everybody just fleeing and 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 all of this suffering. It's really really bad. I, I, obviously, it's not the same scale, but it doesn't change the fact that it's bad, and it's really heartbreaking and. I, I didn't see any condemnation, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but at the time that I'm making this video and I'm, and I'm speaking to you live, I didn't see any, um, I didn't see any condemnation and I don't see anything military, I don't see any military targets in this region, here in, in Donetsk, in the middle of the city, uh, so, you know, you, you decide for yourself whether it was an accident or uh, an errant missile. Uh, I don't think so. I, uh, my opinion, I don't think it was an accident. And uh, I think this was fired indiscriminately. I'm just speculating. But uh, you know why, I'm, why I think that? Because if you look at the last eight years of what's been happening in, in, the, in this region right here in the Donbass, <laughs> 14,000 people have been killed, man, uh, in, in, in total. And 80% of them were in this region. That wasn't an accident. The Ukrainian government, the, the, the fake government, the, the, the one that was, uh, is, you know, engineered by the United States when they did a coup in 2014 and they, they replaced uh, the Ukrainian government with this puppet government. You know, they've declared war, de facto war uh, on the people in this region. And we cannot deny that. We can't just turn a blind eye and say, oh, yeah, this missile just, you know, no, it's it's too common to be a, a to be an accident. These are not. It's not me just say, saying that. Let me pull up. I'm gonna do this right now for you because um, uh, you. This is not my opinion with the with the figures. Um, the United Nations says this. Okay, the United Nations they had a report, uh, which they released, and I think it was about 81.4 percent uh, of the deaths. As I said, from these 14,000, we're in separatist-held areas. And, and 14,000 is the last eight years, but I'm talking about just the last three. So this is from 2018 to, uh, uh, to 2021. So this is from the United Nations, from uh, ukraine.un.org. And you can see here that this is from 2018 to 2021. Civilian casualties caused by active hostilities per territory. Uh, look, look at the total, okay? Uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, underneath here, the percent. So 81.4%, okay, uh, of these casualties were in territory controlled by self-proclaimed republics. So what does that mean? That means we are talking about Luhansk and Donetsk. We're talking about the Donbass region. Do you understand? So you've had a, 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 a pattern, shall we say. You, you've had repeat, you know, an, a, this exchange of violence, and, and most of it is taking place against this region here, the people living here. So, you know, to think that this missile just fell out of the sky, I really, I have serious doubts for people who, uh, who, who believe that. And it's very tragic. Um, and I want to be very clear. It's, this is not like more tragic or more worthy than other, like people who are being killed in other parts of Ukraine. There's still civilians, man. A civilian is a civilian. It doesn't change, you know, uh, where they're from. We're not going to be like these, these hosts on CBS. Uh, so it doesn't change that, but I wanted to just point out to you because my, my point with all of this is that this story, I, I didn't see it as a headline, like the maternity hospital one, and I'm not surprised that there's a lack of condemnation, you know, because you would normally see like every leader coming out in the, in the EU and the West right now, especially in this climate, and condemning this if the Russians had done it, right? They wouldn't hesitate. It would be a top story. And I don't see that right now. And I think my impression from this is that it's in line with what's been happening for the last eight years, which is they don't talk much about the realities in this region, in the Donbass. And they don't want to tell you that the majority of the victims are ethnic Russians or, you know, uh, Russian speaking, um, are people who've, you know, who don't recognize the, the, the fake puppet government and who've resisted uh, this uh, engineered coup by the U.S., 
And I think that's on purpose because they want you to believe the war started on 24th of February. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> what about the last eight years? That's not a war? With all these people being killed? It's certainly a war. It's certainly a war. And most people don't know that because they don't want you to know that on the media. I think, again, if you walk up in the street and you talk to someone, you know, they're, they're not going to know about this. Uh, they're just going to know what's happened in the last three weeks. And again, it doesn't mean like, oh, that's it. we're supporting the invasion or we're supporting going into to Ukraine. But you again, like we were saying with Joey, you can't talk about geopolitics and about international relations and then leave out the international relations and the geopolitics. Get the hell out of here. This is not a fucking psychology class. This is not, you know, pick your favorite equivalent to Hitler. This is international relations, international politics, and we're speaking on some real stuff. Okay? We're putting it in context. We're talking about both sides. We're pointing out the hypocrisy. This is how we roll. And this is what we're doing because the mainstream media are not doing their jobs. Again, very tragic. Uh, and uh, when I see what's happening there, it reminds me a lot of Syria because how they lied about Syria. Uh, you know, they only care about Syrians who, who are killed by the Russians and the Syrian government. They never care about the Syrians who are killed by the terrorists, the ones that they are supporting. And they don't care about the Syrians suffering under the siege, under the sanctions. It's selective, you know, and uh, it, they, they use them as tokens in, in a cynical way. And uh, they actually, they're the vehicles of this harm, the mainstream media, because they encourage it, they sell it, they package it, they put it in a nice, you know, uh, 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 marketable, uh, digestible package for every citizen and every person across the world to swallow, but they're swallowing poison. They're not being told the truth. And this is, again, one of those instances. And I bet you most people heard about the uh, maternity thing, but they ain't heard about this one. And I want to point out the language also because, you know, they say things like, in this case, this is from Reuters. They say Russia accuses Ukraine of missile strike in Donetsk. So Russia accuses. But if it was the other way around, they would say Russia bombed a hospital. They don't say Ukraine accuses Russia of having bombed a hospital. They just say it like it's a fact. Russia bombed the hospital. And here it's like they have to cast doubt on it and say, well, Russia's saying that. I don't know if you want to believe the Russians, but that's what they're saying, <laughs> you know? And this has nothing to do with now. They always do this. I've, I've pointed this out too many times, how they, they play with the language. They say, you know, uh, the, the Syria claims that Israel bombed uh, Damascus, right? They don't say that Israel bombed Damascus, which everyone and their fucking uncle can see. No, no, no. They say it's just a rumor. It's just those, those Syrians who are saying that. You're going to believe Assad? <laughs> you know, that's how they, they market it. Um, and they sell it to you. Look at the BBC. This is the BBC. Three dead hit by Russian airstrike. They don't say Ukraine said that there was a Russian airstrike. Just, just say it, it's a fact. It was a Russian airstrike. Okay, great. I appreciate the clarity. Could you do that across the board, please? Because <laughs> that's not what this looks like. Again, it's, I'm, I'm talking about BBC and Reuters. It's the same, it's the same thing. Uh, all across the board.